hi you guys welcome back to the channel the ninth cup where all of my readings focus on your soul's destiny and everything you can do to embody your soul's purpose my name is karen yearwood and i'm here to give you chiron readings this reading is going to be for the sign of virgo so if you have a chiron in virgo or chiron in the sixth house or you have a stellium in virgo this reading could be for you it is general just apply what resonates and leave the rest as a reminder stelliums or three or more placements in one sign or one house um, and Chiron, it is the wounded healer. It's an aspect of our natal charts that indicates where we are wounded from past lives or even early in the current human experience when we were very, very young, ages zero to seven. So it could show up in subconscious programming and um, yeah, just any blockages, challenges we have in, in that particular area. Um, now this isn't house specific, so the messages that come through today may differ a little bit depending on the house placement of your Chiron and also any conjunctions meaning placements that are side by side with the Chiron. But um, yeah, so Chiron energies, um, it's also how we are talented and gifted in helping others recover and heal in that same area of life. Um, so we have the blockage, but we have the ability to see that in others and be very helpful. So it's the wounded healer. Um, I'm channeling energies from spirit to show me any breakthroughs, challenges, transformations that could be happening for you currently. And I'm just remaining open to, to being a channel for you all. Uh, for those of you who are current subscribers, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your energy with me, liking, sharing the videos, commenting. It really means a lot to me and helping me grow this channel. For those of you who are new, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you stay and this message resonates for you today. I'm starting out with a few oracles from Keepers of the Light for you, Virgo. And a Chiron in Virgo really for me means, um, you know, blockage to um, any type of um, being rounded first and foremost, but then also being organized, being level headed. Um, Chir uh, Chiron, uh, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So Mercury is a planet of communication and also consciousness as it relates to the fifth dimension. So it's, could, you could just be kind of scatterbrained, kind of frazzled, um, not being able to kind of stick to a plan, um, kind of being a little bit, OC not OCD, but whatever is the opposite of that. When you're like too frantic and you can't really hold your thoughts, um, that could be the energies of Chiron and Virgo. Um, but again, it depends on your other placements. So, you know, just... Remain open to the message. The first card out was inner strength, okay? Bridget, move back to wholeness. Recognize that you have the power. Second energy, soul flame. This actually came out for Leo. Um, rediscover a lost part of yourself, experience relationship harmony and healing, okay? And then we have um, trusting heaven. Archangel Michael, you are safe. Angel, stand close. Surrender your concerns and allow a miracle to occur. And that's beautiful energy. All right. So these energies tell me that currently you all could be just, you know, feeling a little bit um, battle weary. I'm getting nine of wands energy, you know, feeling like you've been doing a lot of work, feeling like you've been maybe even helping others out. Um, that is light side of uh, Virgo energy. Actually, it's the like, you know, executive assistant of the zodiac you know it really likes to plan things organize things keep everything in place make sure everything is accounted for so many of you could have been in that energy but it's like there's a blockage in terms of seeing your progress in a very clear way feeling like you know the work is never ended so there's a lot of workaholism or just you know always feeling like you have to do things or you don't feel successful or you know productive or worthy so it's like this idea or this um this notion that you have to kind of work yourself into the ground to be seen as worthy but this is like you know a chance for you to trust that source brings to you what you can handle okay and if you show up and do the work then you will be rewarded accordingly so there's never a need to overextend yourself or to feel like people will maybe leave you abandon you if you don't um and people that do quite frankly don't deserve a place in your life um, those are uh energy vampires those are takers those are people who truly do not um care about your well-being so that is what i'm getting so far with those oracles i'm gonna also get a few astrology cards to see you know more energies in terms of where this could be playing out what do we have we have uranus a planet that rules aquarius and the 11th house so that's friendship community partnerships okay collective efforts humanitarian philanthropic things capricorn rules the 10th house and is ruled by saturn 
it's funny because Leo got Leo had Aquarius and they had um, the 10th house and now you have Uranus and Capricorn so similar energies and now we have Aries Aries ruler of the first house ruled by Mars um, so let me take a second and see what's going on here interesting energy Uranus and Capricorn is telling me that this is definitely kind of um confirming what, uh, what I was saying in the beginning about feeling like you're being battle weary being worked for you know or overworking for others now that's a great thing you know when the time is there and the, the time calls for hard work but this is telling me that um it's just a little bit too much going on i know that the energy with uranus is being very unconventional being very left of center so this could be a source asking you to challenge your beliefs Uranus is um, the black sheep of the zodiac of the planets, I should say. Um, he likes to do things differently. He likes to um, just really challenge the status quo, whereas Capricorn, ruled by Saturn, is all about structure, being steadfast, following a plan, being very resourceful, being abundant, and you know, really working hard to get what it deserves. But Many of you could be overdoing that right now. You know, Virgo, you're an earth sign, fellow earth sign to Capricorn. Okay, so the energies are similar. Aries, that's action oriented. It's um, being, uh, I'm not going to pioneering. Okay, it's taking initiative, action, and being spontaneous and impulsive. So, and it's coming out with trusting heaven. Interesting. You are safe, angels stand close. So, some of you could have also, in recent past, or this could be in the future, maybe um been like what's the word i'm looking for kind of like peer pressure i mean i know we're all adults but you know what i mean like you could have people around you that have kind of coaxed you into doing something or being a part of a, a, an effort that is just taking too much out of you at this point or it's just, you're just not seeing how it's worth it you know what i mean um, and i'm saying that because you have the uranus energy which rules uh, aquarius in the 11th house and that is the house of friendships and partnerships so it's like you know you could have people around you that are like you know we should do this or we're you know i'm doing this you should come on board blah 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 blah, blah. you're really good at doing this and they played it up so you kind of jumped on and took action and you've you know taken initiative which is great you could probably do that really well but it's just not um it's not helping you be the best you and this is a part of your chiron energy is self-neglect basically you know i see that i remember virgo rules the sixth house the house of health and wellness also the house of day-to-day -day activities so you're not prioritizing yourself with this chiron energy and with what is going on in these energies here also some of you could have your chiron in the first house in the 10th house or the 11th house based on those astrology cards that came out now let's dive into the tarot I'm going to use the Light Series Tarot deck for you guys and get a few cards for each uh, row here. Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups. New beginning in love or in, you know, your emotional body. Seven of Wands, having to defend yourself. People coming at you, people pulling and tugging. Wanting you to show up and do different things. Four of Wands. Foundation, stability, kinship, family. So this could be family who have been um, kind of putting these expectations on you or kind of pulling you in, excuse me, to these experiences. Um, this Ace of Cups here, you know, when I actually shuffled the cards and pulled it out, it was in the reverse. Now, I don't take reversals in my readings, but this could just speak to what I mentioned a moment ago about self-neglect, about being overworked and not being able to you know do things for self-care and you know nurturing yourself and slowing down and resting so spirit is saying you know really slow down and not worry about the people who are coming towards you or you know seven of wands is it's like being defensive it's like saying you know whoa stop like you know people are it's like when somebody is like not somebody some people are like always calling you always messaging you or like you do one thing and then they want something else and there's kind of like no end to it and it's disrupting your level or your idea of foundation because the four of wands here is that you know some people see it as the marriage card but in this reading i just see it as like your foundation you know your ability to be grounded to do things in a very um systemic or um, not systemic systematic way um and and create like structure and um 
stability in your own life. What do we have here? Yeah, six of cups. So this is like nostalgia, but it's also like childhood ch or children. So for the, some of you, this could be um, related to children or for those of you who have children, maybe you're being like overworked or you, you're just like taking on too many things as it re relates to your children. Maybe you don't have enough help to do that. Or for those of you who have adult children, if those of you old enough to have adult children, this could be related to that. Like your adult children wanting too much of you and not taking responsibility for themselves. It's causing a lot of um, anxiety, you know, overthinking things, self-imposed mental imprisonment, feeling like you can't get out of it. Like you just are, you know, feeling like responsible. I'm getting like, you're feeling responsible for a lot of things and people that you are not. What else do we have? Three of wands wanting to take action, but not. This is seeing how you can take action, but waiting, you know, three of wands is waiting, waiting for the right opportunity, waiting, waiting for the right time to present itself. Um, this could be pertaining to the project or event or whatever is going on in your life. You're kind of waiting for the right time to back out of it, right? Waiting until you feel like everything is secure enough for you to no longer be involved. Um, but you're not yet because you have this Capricorn energy. Capricorn's very diligent, very steadfast, very much, you know, a Capricorn will outwork you. It's coming out with soul flame though. Rediscover a lost part of yourself. Experience relationship, harmony, and healing. Okay, so this is it. Some of you could be feeling like you engaging in this endeavor and this project, whatever it is that's going on, is a way for you to prove yourself or discover a lost part of yourself because six of cups is nostalgic it could also be pertaining to your childhood so i was getting children currently but this could be um, what you experience in your early childhood and remember chiron can be linked to early childhood it is zero to seven so maybe you saw people around you working really hard maybe you saw your parents kind of like being very supportive and you know always doing things for people maybe they were philanthropists or humanitarians and it's like you never saw the fruits of their labor in your household but you saw all the amazing things that they were able to do for other people so now it's like you're kind of in that um in that energy which you know it's coming from the heart you have ace of cups here so it is coming from a good place but you're not being realistic in terms of how it's going to affect you you know in the physical in your physical body even in your mental state, you know, you're overthinking, you're probably not even sleeping well. And um, this is something that Source really wants you to pay attention to. Yeah, moon, shadow energy, shadow energy, um, not being clear on things. You're not being clear or you're not clear on like your position here. You know, you're probably just doing it because you feel like it's the right thing to do. But there's something hidden in terms of like your actual purpose. The angel card that came out was trusting heaven. You are safe. Angels stand close. Yeah, that's beautiful. So as you take action, you know, you're always being protected, Virgo. So I don't think that anything is like going to necessarily come crashing down here. You don't have the tower card. You don't have the death card. You don't have anything that suggests that. Um, you have new beginnings, actually. You have two aces now, ace of swords, and you had ace of cups here. So this is like a kind of a revelation. This is like a truth, a new truth coming through where it's like you're able to see maybe how some things in your childhood were dysfunctional, um, were like too self-sacrificing, were too um, like people just taking advantage of the resources that your family had. And you might have believed that that was the way to be, the very respectable and, you know, notable thing to do, but it's not. Look, the sun, healing energy. Sun rules Leo, fifth house. This is beautiful. Um, bliss, abundance, happiness, you know. So I think once this revelation comes through, the sun shines for you. Like when you see that you've done enough, like you always put your all in, Virgo. Like when you see that, um, you know, health and wellness, when you prioritize yourself, like others around you win. And um, it's not selfish. It's not mean. It's not turning your back on a legacy, you know, on things that you did see in your childhood and your family. Like, you know, there, there might be aspects of that that you very much respect and you revere because you have Capricorn and that is a very like respectable energy, um, very uh, knowledgeable, very astute. So, you know, there could be, um, you know, people from your past, like parents, aunts, uncles, the adults from your past that were very, um, you know, they had like causes that they put their heart into 
and they were very much like like uh what's the word i'm looking for i always draw blanks on my adjective sorry about that but you know what i mean that they were like a respected they're like a pillar of the community there you go they were probably a pillar of the community of some sort because you do have uranus energy ruling the 11th house with collective so you want to maintain that but it doesn't have to be at the expense of your own well-being okay this is what i think spirit wants you to know and you know how you can maybe heal this Chiron placement, Chiron energies that are appearing in your life at this point. It's just doing the best that you can. Um, not turning your back on yourself. Not um, feeling like your worth is only tied to what you can do for others. You know, not only tied to external like work. Um, there is more to you than that. Now I'm going to wrap up with a few angel answers. So think of a yes or no question. And I'm just going to get a few cards for you. We have don't stop. <laughs> so with this though, don't stop means, and I know you won't Virgo, because <laughs> Virgo energy is very, very diligent, just like Capricorn. But what it means is that you prioritizing yourself doesn't mean you stop engaging in the partnerships, events, and activities that you do uh, hold near and dear to your heart. Um, it just means that you do so in a more mindful way. And you have those boundaries to let people know that they can't ask too much of you and you know you do have to take a break you do have to prioritize self and you can't say yes to everything okay absolutely no <laughs> source wants you to learn how to use this word they want you to learn how to say no okay and stop being a yes person a yes woman or a yes man what else do we have here ask for help from others yeah so that could be another blockage is that you think that you have to do things all alone. You know, when someone asks you for something that you have to just now take that on all by yourself. You can ask for help, you know, you can negotiate. You can say, you know, not now, right? Yes, but not right now. You can say that as well. Okay, Virgo, so this is what I have for you. I hope that it resonates or at least a part of it does. Um, thank you guys so much for being here again. Um, subscribe to, to the channel if you haven't already. And like the video if it's, you know, this is your kind of thing. My email address is down, not email, I'm sorry, my website. My website is linked below. You can go there to get um, information on booking a personal reading. And uh, whether it's tarot or life path astrology readings, tarot readings, a tarot reading does come with a life path astrology reading with your natal chart. And then I also have linked um, my five-day breakthrough course just to help you, you know, if you're interested, get a little bit clear and organized on your healing journey and catapult you further ahead. I've also linked my um, collaborative book project that was recently published. Um, it's an Amazon bestseller in three categories in the United States. I am the author of chapter 12. Okay, there's 25 chapters. And my chapter is basically about my experience with growing up in a narcissistic home and how astrology, personal astrology has led me to where I am now. And, um, and in the healing journey. So if you have a similar experience, you may resonate with that and also with many of the other chapters in the book. So that's a plus um, and that's linked below. So that is all you guys. Love you so much. Hope to see you in the next reading and be sure to thrive. Bye.